Hello everyone, welcome back to a tutorial on extending G Suite with AppScript. Uh, today's topic I'd like to focus on teacher schedules and Google Calendar. In most cases, schools have a very difficult time getting teacher schedules into Google Calendar in a very easy and efficient manner. So today I'd like to demonstrate a workflow via a deployed web app that can take care of this for you. Now it does involve a little bit of initial setup, but I will sort of explain some of the features of that um, and perhaps a second video detailing how the code is actually functioning. So you're looking here at what I'm going to call a master, a calendar master account. Um, and on this account, um, there are subscriptions to teacher schedule calendars from the student information system. So for example, it has, it may have a WebCal address like this one. And this would be for all of the teachers. So that would be kind of the legwork is first collecting and subscribing to all of the individual feeds within the master calendar account. Then um, the next step would be to create sort of a database of these calendar IDs. Because once you've subscribed to the calendar, if we look at the settings, um, this gives us a calendar ID that we can work with in AppScript. Um, and you want to be sure that the subscriptions are publicly accessible. Otherwise, you will not be able to retrieve that information if it's not a publicly accessible uh, calendar. So imagine having, you know, however many teachers you have, you'd have that many subscriptions. So to go along with that, in a Google Sheet, you would then identify all of your teachers with their specific calendar IDs. So this is essentially building a, a two-column database that would look up the calendar ID based on the user who is accessing the app, right? So when Teacher 4 launches the web app, the script will look down row A and locate the calendar ID for Teacher 4. And what that'll do is populate the subscription calendar into the primary calendar of that user. Now why is that important? So currently this calendar right here is great for for me as a teacher but none of this stuff is visible to anyone else in the school. So if I'm trying to, if someone's trying to plan a, a meeting with me they don't see any of this. So and if Google Calendar is where I live and where I work um, I want to make sure this information is visible. Therefore, if I turn on my primary calendar, notice here I have about a week's worth of duplicate entries. So the way the web app works is it is essentially reading all of the events on the subscrip subscribed calendar and checking to see if they've already been added to my primary calendar. And if not, it would add them within a given period of time. So this app right now is set for about one week's worth of time, but I do envision uh, lengthening that duration to about four weeks of time. So for example, tomorrow when I wake up, uh, the 17th will also be populated, All right? So this is, the the calendar would be populated as the years go on. And the reason you may be asking, well, why not just do the whole calendar all at once? There are limitations with the amount of events you can create uh, using AppScript within a short period of time. So in order to avoid hitting those limits, um, you want to find a sweet spot for how many weeks um, you would want to create events worth. So. So that's kind of essentially what's happening is using the subscribed calendar 
as a reference reference point and then automatically adding events um, sometime between 1 a.m. and 2 in the morning. So that way you have this floating calendar being built uh, without any effort at all. So attached, I guess you could say, bound to this database is a Google Apps script. Let me just open up the script editor. And I've set this up in such a way that it functions as a web app, uh, but the key the key thing here is sort of the functionality under my schedule. And within this code, um, there's a couple of important features. One is the idea of creating a keyword to exclude from the event creation. So, for example, I was having an issue where the all-day events were populating across two days and I decided I really didn't even need any of the all-day events to populate so I used a keyword to exclude any event that had the word school in it so and I made that a variable and you could create a long list of words that you would want to exclude when the app is searching for events to add so that's why we don't see any duplicate entries here in the all day events because I'm really only interested in the daily schedule piece and not in the all day events. And the other important piece is that the script also creates a time driven trigger um, and that's going to occur between 1 and 2 in the morning. Um, and this will, each time it deletes the existing trigger and sets a new one. And this is set to operate and to function on a daily basis. And there's some notes in my the code here that sort of describe how the it, it's functioning. So there there is a loop taking place that is designed to locate the calendar ID. Um, and once it's found it, the, the loop is broken. Um, and this right here is essentially the calendar ID of the active user. And as you can see in this part here, we're getting the on-campus calendar events to see if there's any events that needed to be added to my primary calendar. Um, then we get the primary calendar. And then there's an array that's built um, by comparing tags. Because we're tagging uh, the primary calendar events with the actual event ID, that's a good means for de determining whether or not the event has been added or not. So, and uh, the rest is pretty self-explanatory. Here is where we're duplicating the event from um, the on-campus calendar onto our primary calendar right here. And um, I also don't want to hide the fact that this was actually derived um, and modified from a snippet of code I found on Stack Overflow. So um, here's the original question and answer. So copy events from one Google Calendar to another without duplication. So that was sort of the source of building out the rest of this web app. So. Um, just so we can kind of see this in action, uh, what I've done is I've added a teacher for, um, and I've just used the same, so the, the same WebCal calendar ID as the other ones. And I've logged in uh, to teacher for over here. So you can see this is teacher for. And what I'm going to do is launch the web app, and you're going to watch how quickly the events come in. Um, and the other cool feature is that the app will also hide automatically the subscribed calendar to avoid confusion. So the only thing the teacher will see is their schedule on their primary calendar. They won't even have to know that this subscription piece exists. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and get the app URL and see how it's 
being executed as the user accessing the web. So that is, it would be accessing it as the teacher and it's available to anyone with, within the domain. So I'm gonna copy the web app address, come over here to teacher four. And of course, I'm gonna be asked to review the permissions. So um, I need to review what the permissions are I'm granting and what account. So this is teacher four. And here are the permissions that are being allowed to manage the calendar, to view and manage your spreadsheets in Google Drive, and to allow this application to run when you are not present. So this is needed in order for it to continually add my classes to my Google Calendar on a rolling basis. So I said, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with this. I click allow, and now I have access to the interface. So this area isn't very pretty. Um, but it says here, you know, by clicking on the link above, and I'm gonna change the wording on this, your on-campus calendar events will appear on your primary calendar that you have editing access to. So when I hit subscribe, there's a brief kind of waiting period. And then I get a confirmation saying, you are subscribed. So if I go back to the calendar, I notice now that my teaching calendar for, again, this is only seven days worth of, of events, but it's now available to me and hence visible to others in my school uh, for planning meeting times. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration and um, I, I may try to dig into the code a little bit more in a later video, but I think I gave enough here to describe how it functions. Thanks for watching. Bye.